What's up guys, welcome back. Oh, it's out of storage. We are working on the boat today. Already got the truck unloaded. Got my mod up here. Let's get to it. Then I'll tell you what we're doing. We are trying to take care of everything that we were gonna do when it was in the water, but but we'll be in the water in four days, five days. Five days? Six days, six days. Yeah, goes in the water on Friday. So we have some electronic stuff to figure out with the Garmin. I am installing a, what they call an AIS system. Don't really need it for this lake. There's only a handful of boats on this lake that run that. It's just kind of a nationwide GPS collision course all rolled up into one little thing, if you will. Uh, it shows other vessels that are pumping out AIS signal. So we have to install a GPS receiver up here and install a little module. The only boats that I know that actually actively run it or push out a signal are emergency services, Coast Guard, fire, police. Uh, there are a lot more people on this lake that have it, they just don't push it. I'm a nerd, I like the electronic stuff. Do I need it? No. It's more for an offshore vessel or intercoastal. It's overkill for this lake, but it does add selling value. When we do want to sell this boat, uh, somebody on the coast buys it, they're set up for it. Device that we are going to install. So I had to bring the laptop because I do have to program it. Most of the programming I already did, so it should be ready to go. But once it's installed, I'll recalibrate it just to make sure. Uh, so there's the GPS antenna and there's the Garmin AIS device. And then all the NEMA cables. Uh, this device also does have an active splitter built into it so I do not need to run two antennas. Uh, some of the older systems you had to run one antenna, one for the VHF and one for the IS. This device has the active splitter so you just need one antenna. The radio plums into the AIS device and the outer antenna plugs into the AIS device as well. Once you key up on the radio it shuts a uh, quick transmission off of the GIS, pumps out your signal, vice versa, whatever. Nerd stuff. Anyway, this thing is filthy. I think Bex is coming down shortly to maybe do some cleaning without further ado. So part of me wants to try just to knock out the antenna portion right away. That's going to be the hardest. So I need to see if I got the old 5200 in my compartment here. My junk drawers, if you will. It's light bulbs, lights. Ooh, that stuff's good. There it is. 4200, I lied. Good stuff, good stuff. Is it still good? Hopefully, hopefully it's still good. So like I said in the last video, this is going to screw into those three holes, hopefully, or close to it. So let's get up there, Ooh. see what kind of antenna's there and which way it's going. Unfortunately, it looks like that wire goes that way. That's not the way I want it to. I want it to go this way. Darn it. So we're gonna take this panel off, start feeding the new wire through. Hopefully that wire is long enough. Sure hope so. We'll find out real quick. This is where uh, two people would be helpful. <laughs> a bunch of other wires in here. Oh, that's right where the light is. Can't get past the light. Oh, by the way, I'm gonna have to drill new holes because these holes don't line up. <laughs> I have to take that light off down below. If I did have to come take this light out to feed the wire through, and then from here I'll push it. It'll be easier to push this way. Oh, I hope I don't have to take that light out, but I will probably have to take the speaker out uh, to find, because I know where the arch meets the frame, there's just a, it's not that big of a hole. And then we'll have to take out that panel as well. Oh, we made some progress. So the cable is, I'll be the outside. I did have to take this light out. Cable's coming through there. You can see the bright blue sky. Take this panel out, feed the cable through here. This light out, don't look at these connections. North Idaho waterproofing. And ran down, it gets tight in these corners. I was worried about it. Had to take the speaker out, pull it out, and now we drop it through the hole. I have to take this panel out, and we'll feed it through into the dash. Home run, hard part done. All right, this panel comes out. This is the, I mean, it's easy access, but not so fun part. And I, Dropped one of these bad boys. But this is where you start to get all itchy with the fiberglass. So I don't know if you can see that 
So there's a little wall right here with a hole where wires are coming through. A little white light there, that's the hole that the arch comes through for the wires. So, I forgot my little reacher grabber madoohickey. So we're gonna try to get real skinny to get that arm. This should be fun. This is looking down into the arch, going down, a little blurry. That's the hole we need to make it down into. So if I can follow that cable somehow, we'll get it. Oh, oh, let me see what I can do. Oh, lost it. Just had an epiphany here. So with all the extra slack that I was able to pull out from the VHF, I didn't bring any electrical tape, but I try to wind this around here and I'm going to pull the VHF cable right there. Yank that through, maybe that'll pull it through. Let's give it a shot. They got it. Woo! The hard part is done. So now there's a little hole right here that feeds under the, uh, the dash panel. So that hard part's done. Not going to finish that up, put anything away yet. We're going to go up and install the GPS on the roof. And we're going to feed this slack through. Is that going into the boat? Yep, that's going into the boat. Feed this through here. Oh, I hate drilling holes. Oh, I do not like drilling holes. Forty-two hundred, not as bad as fifty-two. If you've ever worked with this stuff, you know what I'm talking about. If you get it on your clothes, it's on your clothes forever. Whew. That's been on there a while. I did not throw it on the ground. I threw it on the bow railing. Hopefully, nothing's really spilling out. But I know I have a good tack because it's hard to try to pull off. Screwdriver, scalpel, scalpel, doctor, doctor. Oh, I'm glad I went down a size on the drill bit. It's nice and snug. Oh yeah. I don't know if the uh, that microphone is picking up the the little crackling sound of the 42 ceiling. Now, to do this like officially properly, if I had a good nozzle on that 42, I would do a bead all the way around to get a good seal. But since I don't have a good nozzle, it's gonna have to wait. And we'll probably do it at the slip. But I can guarantee that's already gonna be waterproof. There we go. That's that. What we do is we feed this through here. Good enough. And this does have little set screws right here that I forgot to bring, of course. There we go. There we go. We're done up here. We are installed. Just like that. It's done. Now back inside to get the slack all buttoned up. Get all the lights in panels and then we'll get to the actual unit itself and get that hooked up to the chart plotter and hook the laptop up and do some programming all right we are all buttoned up all the lights put back on panels speaker that's the only panel that's still open because we still have to feed the wire and the ais brain is going to go down here oh no worry it's not as bad as it looks it's actually fairly organized I just need to find out what circuit to put it on. And so that it's accessible, be able to plug a USB cable into it. Once I get things figured out and situated, I'll, uh, I'll come back to you. Yeah, it's gonna be fun, fun, a lot of fun. All right, we have the main power lead wired in, so don't judge me yet. 
I don't have anything cleaned up. Nothing's, the wires aren't all tidied up and zip tied yet. But we will. Um, these extra ones are for the uh, NEMA 0183. We are on a NEMA 2000 network. So we have the backbone here. So this is for the, this is the AIS. And then we have, I think, stereo, chart plotter. What else do we have? Oh, and power. This is the main power coming in for the NEMA. So this backbone it is powered up and the AIS does get power from the backbone, but you still have to wire it in to the main vessel power. So we're going to do a quick test fire up, make sure everything's good. And I still have to, actually we're not yet. We gotta wire in the, uh, the antennas. And then once I know everything's working out, we'll get the chart plotter configured to work. Make sure this recognizes the AIS system. And once we know it's working, then we'll tidy everything up, make it look all pretty. We'll learn together. All right, we are all hooked up. Yes, it looks like a hodgepodge right now, but we're doing some testing. So, we got the old computer tray out. It's connected, our diagnostics. We are all okay. We have a good GPS signal. We are a pleasure craft. D's not astute. And yes, I'm making this public. So if you want to search on marinetraffic.com or whatever, go for it. I don't care. Just don't stalk me. And obviously we're not receiving any data because there's nobody out there running this. Disconnect the computer because we have no errors. Unplug. Put the computer away. Oh, now the fun part. This is where we all learn together. Sorry for the reflection. And it, since everything's working properly, this should recognize that there is a new device on the network. Home. Home. Software updates. Of course. No, not yet. So let's go to, I think, communications, NEMA, device list. There it is. Change name. No name. We'll just do, we'll just do AIS. Done. Marine traffic just picked up the AIS station. So, the world can see us now. It's working. Uh, Tarp Plotter is doing a system update, go figure. Uh, but recognize the device. I don't think there's any more setup to do. Um, we have everything all bundled, tidied best it's going to get for now. I'll put this panel back in, do some cleanup here, and then on to the next project. You did what? We're just waiting for the old Garmin to do an update. Oh, and for shore power, we are running off a generator right now to keep batteries charged while I was doing all the electronic stuff. Just waiting for the Garmin to update. And we'll close up shop, take the cord over to the slip. Uh, it was in the butt truck. Awesome. Gracias. See you. So, okay. So really the only thing I'm hanging out for is waiting for that to finish updating. Let's take a troll downstairs. Let's do a little test. Yeah. Charging, shore power is good. Oh, I was like, what was that? What's leaking? Why am I only getting speakers in the front? I was wondering why I was only getting speakers in the front of the boat. Nothing in the back. And it was because I forgot about the gain control. There we go. Now we got sound. Working. Oh, it sounds so good. So good. Waiting for that beat to drop in. Oh, 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 yeah. Typical. I forgot to drop the antenna. 
some of my biznatch. That's right. It's just going from here right to the water. And the water is literally just over that shop. She's a beaut, Clark. <clears throat> and here are all the tarps. Just trying to fall in. So this dock was literally sitting on the ground a month ago. Not even. Three weeks ago. <clears throat> it's our recording salt. had it with GoPros. I've got one in the shop, one coming back from GoPro under warranty repair. The one I'm using today kind of is glitching out on me. Anybody using the Insta360 stuff? Let me know because I would gladly switch over to something more reliable for a portable action sports camera. Anyway, because it froze up on the, uh, as soon as I went to the dock box, it froze up. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Uh, we're on the water next weekend. Can't wait. It's going to be super awesome. Should be uh, close to 70 degrees, I think. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time. Bye-bye.